I just wanted to say a, a few opening words this morning to, uh, to get us started. Uh, Citizen University, this is the first year we've done this gathering under this name. Uh, as many of you know, for seven or eight years now, we've been doing a gathering every spring here called the Guiding Lights Weekend. And um, I want to just give you a little bit of the genealogy of that because it speaks a fair amount to why we're doing what we're doing, what we're going to be doing today, and how. So the genealogy is this. Guiding Lights Weekend, at its inception in 2005, was a gathering on the art of mentorship, how we form one another and influence one another, intentionally or not intentionally. And as we did that gathering year over year and built an ever wider, ever more rich and diverse community that was impassioned about the art of mentorship, it became very clear that that work of mentoring, whether it's formal or infor informal, is always situated in a community context. There is no text of a mentoring relationship that does not w exist within that larger context. And so we began to shift our focus to that wider lens of how do we form community? What is the structure of community that makes possible or doesn't make possible the kind of mentoring and cultivation of talent and possibility and potential in our communities around us? And from there, after a few more years, it evolved very naturally to realize that when we're talking about showing up for one another in community, when we're talking about creating with an intentional spirit of head and heart a sense of being connected to one another, when we're talking about building the bonds of trust and affection that enable a community to thrive not just on paper but in flesh and blood, what we're talking about is citizenship. Citizenship in the broadest, most capacious sense. Not only, in fact, perhaps not even primarily as a matter of law and documentation status and the kinds of papers one has, but citizenship in the sense that one of my mentors and heroes, Bill Gates Sr. says, showing up for life. How do we show up for each other? How do we see ourselves as woven together in this weave of obligation and relationship? That notion of citizenship, which we came to realize is the heart of what we're doing, we brought to the surface. And so we decided this year Let's name this gathering in recognition of the spirit that has just emerged in this organic way. And Citizen University is the name we came up with, and it just opened up an incredible channel of energy to name it this way, to crack open this conversation and this exploration of the meaning and the content of our citizenship. And I stand here today, and we began this morning with the national anthem because we are all citizens of many spheres. We are citizens of our neighborhoods. We are citizens of our state. We are citizens of this country. We are citizens of this planet in different ways. In this room gathered here today are people from, I believe, upwards of 18, 19, 20 states. But then there are also people from 18, 19 different parts of Washington state. There are people from 18, 19 different neighborhoods in Seattle. And this idea of being a citizen of all these places is important. But so is the fact that what makes it possible for us to have this kind of conversation, for us to explore the full richness and breadth, the complexity, the contradiction, the hypocrisy sometimes of our citizenship, is that we do live in an American context. We are situated in the context of the United States. And our opportunity and obligation as, as, Amer as Americans is to not simply receive as fixed the inheritance of national identity and of being a member of this community, whether documented or not, however long it may have been, our obligation and opportunity is continuously to question, continuously to unpack, and continuously to peel apart that meaning of citizenship. That's why we're here today. We are here for a full, full day and then a beautiful, full evening tonight to explore these questions of the meaning of American citizenship and the meaning of our obligation to one another in many different forms and formats. Last night we had a, a welcome dinner for many of our speakers and sponsors and other guests from out of town. And as I looked around that room, I realized we had uh, many people of roughly my middle-aged generation, but we also had several kids in the room. And then we had a few grandparents in the room. We had a woman who is, I believe, four or five weeks from delivering a child. 
And I thought about that room last night, and I realized what we had in that room is what one of our speakers today, Ai Jen Poo, will be describing in a very simple phrase, which is caring across generations, which is another way of thinking about citizenship. It is not about only what we get to do or what we have to do in our time here, but it is thinking about the ways in which we are linked in this chain of relationship and obligation across the generations. What we're going to do today and what you're going to be part of is a really rich and experimental kind of gathering. We're going to have an array of remarkable speakers, and you've seen on your program and you've seen by registering here uh, the, the, the array of folks that we're going to be hearing from today. And in many ways, the format, if you've ever been to or seen a TED or a TEDx conference, it'll be similar to that. We'll have people coming up here and talking for 15, 18 minutes on various topics to provoke and inspire and uh, make you question and think about things. But unlike any TED conference I've seen or been to, uh, we've designed this in a way where, again, in the spirit of Guiding Lights and Guiding Lights Weekend, where we all get to teach one another, where the speakers on stage get to come and be part of the learning community. And so every two or three or so speakers, we're going to take the attention off the stage and redirect it to you. And we're going to have rich, focused conversations at your tables of 10 about the question or the challenge or the charge that the speakers have just put on the table. And as you, in your conversations at your table, explore that, there hopefully at each one of your tables is uh, somebody who's been designated a table host. Many of them are members of a, uh, a network that I've created, a national network of leaders and innovators in civic life called the Civic Collaboratory. We also have students from the University of Washington and other young people here in the house who are serving as co-hosts. If you happen to sit at a table where nobody is wearing um, a badge with an orange lanyard and you see that orange lanyard sitting on your table, this is your chance to begin practicing citizenship. Lean in, lean in pick up that orange lanyard, put it on and say, I'm a, I'm a co-host of this conversation. And I'm kind of joking, but I'm kind of not. This is how it's going to be all day long, right? This is a new format for us. I'm sure there are going to be little bumps and little things that don't quite work. And it's all about whether we come with the head and the heart and the spirit and the mindset of we're going to play together. We're going to try together. We're going to experiment together. And when we see something might not be working as designed or we see someone not taking a mantle of leadership that they've been assigned, we're going to lean in. We're going to accept that opportunity of citizenship. And that notion of experiment, that notion of lean in, is just what I want to close with uh, this morning here. The very thing that we are doing here, living in this country at this time right now, is simply being the 14th, or depending on how you measure it, maybe come, coming on the 15th generation of a long-running experiment. Generation 14, generation 15 of this experiment in a republic, this experiment in a self-governing democracy. And as each generation has had its turn to run that experiment, to drive the running of that experiment, it's changed. More than half the people in this room wouldn't have been part of a room of people who might claim the title American or claim the title citizen one, two, five, seven generations ago. But here we are. It is, it is an experiment continuously evolving and continuously requiring us to evolve. And that is the spirit in which we live like citizens. That is the spirit in which we engage one another, not just today, not just tonight, but every day. And as we have these opportunities to have your table conversations, and then I'll come back on stage and pull up thoughts and themes and ideas and provocations that have emerged from your table conversations, and we will stitch them back with our speakers here, I want us to think about this as a grand experiment in how we reckon with one another, how we take ideas and inspiration and actualize them, how we take seeds planted by others and begin to plot in our minds, in our hearts, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, the gardens of democracy that we are all responsible for. Every one of us here is here to tend. Every one of us here is here to water. Every one of us here is here to seed, to feed, and to make sure those gardens thrive. And so I invite all of you to think of yourselves as teachers, 
as leaders, as mentors, as guiding lights, as great citizens, and to practice, beginning now, the art of making this experiment run at least one more generation.